Hello friends, we are still not employed by Fang company. So let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do linked list cycle problem. So basically it is a problem to detect cycle inside the linked list. And this problem has been asked by a bunch of different companies. So let's see that what are my dream companies that have asked this problem. Uh, it contains the companies like Amazon, Microsoft, Shopify, Goldman Sachs that we recently got rejected at. Uh, Google, Bloomberg, Apple, Facebook, Yahoo, Splunk and eBay. So these are some of the companies that I'm really interested to get a job into. And uh, that's why I'm paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. So this is a lead code easy problem and it is really simple to understand. Basically we are given the head of a linked list and we need to determine that whether this linked list contains a cycle or not. Now, first of all, we need to understand that what is the property of a linked list. Basically inside the linked list, we are given two items. First item, we are given some data point that represents that particular node inside the linked list. And we are given the information about the next node inside the given linked list. And that is how linked list keeps on progressing. So we will keep this in mind. I like hopefully everyone should be uh, familiar with this one. And now the question is that we need to determine that whether inside our given linked list, does there exist a loop or not? So suppose we are given a linked list like this and we, in this case, we can clearly see that there exists a loop between this four and this two. The question is that how do we detect that there exists a cycle? And uh, first solution that comes to mind is the solution that we have been using at different graph and uh, some other problems. So basically what we can do is at any moment we are given this head position. So what we can do is we can create another data structure uh, called a hash set and inside this hash set we are going to keep track of all the visited nodes uh, that we have passed so far. And what we are going to do is initially, first of all, we are going to check that whether at any given node we are currently at, if that exists inside this vis visited hash set or not. If it does not exist, we will add it to this visited hash set and we will keep moving forward. So at any moment, if we encounter the same node, we can clearly determine that there exists a cycle. So in this case, first of all, we will check that whether this one exists in the visited hash set, it does not exist. So we will add one over here. Then again, we check for two, two does not exist. So we will add two over here. Then again, we check for three, three does not exist. So again, we add three over here and again, we check for four. So four also does not exist. So we will add all four entries. Now from this four, the next value it points to, it actually points to this value number two. And whenever we check that whether this two exists or not, we can clearly see that two exists over here. And we can immediately say that because we came back at a node that we have already visited before inside the hash set, we can determine that there exists a cycle. And in this case, we will return true that, okay, yes, there exists a cycle over here. And uh, that would be our solution. Now this solution is perfectly fine. It works. Okay. If we calculate the time and space complexity, the time complexity in this case is going to be big O of N because we are iterating over all the nodes just one, one time. And the space complexity in this case would be big O of N as well, because we are using this additional visited hash set, uh, to detect that whether there exists a cycle or not. The next thing that your interviewer is going to do is he is clearly going to ask that solve this problem without using this additional uh, item uh, uh, additional uh, space and the space th complexity should be big O of 1. So let me show you the most optimal solution where the space complexity would be big O of 1 and time complexity would be big O of n. I have a short announcement. I have recently created a GitHub repository. Uh, the link is in the description and I will quickly show it to you as well. So this is the repository that I was talking about and I have left it public so anyone can access it. It contains list of solutions of all the lead code problems that we have solved so far. Uh, so you can click on any problem and you can go to its solution and it will contain the Java solution for that particular problem that is acceptable at lead code. Our aim is to see this list growing and uh, I would be posting all the solutions that I solve and uh, hope it helps other fellow coders and uh, our aim is to get into Fang and hopefully this can be a big stepping stone towards that direction. Basically what we are going to do is we are actually going to have two pointers that iterate over this given linked list and we are going to have a slow pointer and a fast pointer and the aim is that at any moment this fast pointer is always intended to stay ahead of the slow pointer and 
if we identify that this fast pointer actually reaches back to the slow pointer, we can determine that there exists a cycle. Let me show you how. So what we are going to do is we are at this head position. So we are going to first of all initialize our slow pointer and our fast pointer at these positions. So uh, slow pointer would be at the first position and fast pointer will always start at the second position. Now we are at this position. We are going to have one more condition that slow pointer will always do one jump. So slow pointer will always do slow plus one. So it will always go to next node. But for the fast pointer, we are actually going to have fast pointer do two, two jumps. So fast pointer is going to do fast pointer plus two nodes, two node jumps. And let's see that how things will turn out in this case. So initially we are at these positions. Now this first pointer makes a, makes two jumps and slow pointer makes one jump. So their corresponding position change. So slow pointer will reach over here. And meanwhile, fast pointer actually made two jumps. So fast pointer will end up over here. Now, the in the next case the slow pointer again is going to make one jump so slow pointer will reach over here and this fast pointer is going to make two jumps so fast pointer will make one jump over here and second jump it will reach over here so in this case fast pointer will also reach at this place and slow pointer also reached at this place so over here we determine that this uh, value at this fast is equal to value at the slow node and because we identify this condition this can only happen true if there existed a cycle somewhere and because there existed a cycle we are able to determine that okay there exist um, like this fast and slow reach at the same point uh, they met at the same node so that's why there for sure there has to be a cycle uh, what happens if there does not exist a cycle so, so say for an example in this case uh, again let's just go back to this scenario that okay this is the list, list we are given and there does not exist a cycle and let's add one more node over here we'll just uh, name it number five and uh, this is the whole link list we are given now in this case again this is the slow pointer this is the fast pointer and we are always going to have a terminating condition that either if slow reaches at the end or if fast reaches at the end at any given moment we reach to the end of the list and we find that the value of this slow or fast pointer is actually null if that is the case we can determine that uh, we are able to successfully traverse over the entire link list without detecting a cycle and that would be our final solution so in this case uh, slow is here fast is here let's make one jump so again so now the slow would be here and fast would actually be here now again let's just make one more jump so in this case uh, slow would be here but fast would have already crossed this portion so fast would be somewhere over here the node is null which means immediately we can determine that because we find that the fast pointer was at null value that there does not exist a cycle in this case and we can uh, we will return false in this scenario so this would be the most optimal solution for this problem it is very easy and very trivial to understand as long as you get this trick and if we calculate the time and space complexity the time complexity would be big of n because in any case we will have to iterate over all the nodes in terms of space complexity apart from using couple of uh, additional variables we are not using any more space so we can say that the space complexity is actually constant time we go off one and this would be the most optimal approach okay so first of all we are going to check that if the given head is equal to null we are going to return false so this would be an edge case that we took care of now we are going to create two list nodes uh, one is for slow and we are going to initialize it to the head position and second one is fast and we are going to initialize it to uh, next pos uh, the second position. Okay, now we are going to run a while loop that while slow is not equal to null or uh, fast is not equal to null, we are going to keep iterating over. And we are going to check that if the fast.next element if that is null we can also return false immediately if that is not the case if at any point we identify that the value at fast is equal to value at slow if that is the case we can immediately say that there exists a cycle and we can return true otherwise we will have to update the counter so slow would be slow.next so because we are incrementing slow by one value 
uh, but for fast we are actually in incrementing fast by two values so fast would be fast dot next dot next and uh, that's it and if at any moment we are able to get out of the loop we can always return false and uh, this should be the solution let's try to run the code okay seems like our solution is working let's try to submit the code Okay, we are going to check that if fast is equal to null or fast dot next equal to null. Okay, seems like our solution is working and it's actually pretty fast. It's actually, uh, it runs in zero milliseconds. So 100% faster than all the other solution. And even in terms of memory usage, we are beating out most of the people because over here we are actually ending our loop early. Uh, by using the, these both these conditions and uh, again inside the github I will be providing the solution to all these problems so you can go and check it out over here I would be posting this link in the description and I uh, hope this video helps uh, all the other communities that I feel so dear for and uh, not stopping till we get into fang see you next time